Hi, I'm Dolph Janice of Clear Income Strategies Group, and I'd like to personally like to welcome and thank you for joining us today. Webinar has been by popular demand. I had a, several lunch and learns and even a couple of dinner seminars where we were sold out and we've had numerous people asking uh, they wanted to relearn this content on how to utilize Social Security and why an annuity may not be right for you. And so over the next 30, 35 minutes, I'm going to share this with you. Uh, any feedback or comments, please let us know. Um, you can have the option of at the end, email us um, and let us know if you'd like to get all the handouts from this with the social security handout, the annuity rates handout, the white papers and stuff that we give to you. So if you join up just by watching today and letting us know that you wanted that information, you will be sent that information within 24 hours after watching this video. So I hope you enjoy it. If there's any questions for you, please feel free to share the questions in the question box for us at any time you want to. I've been doing this interest three since basically 2004, 2005. Uh, as a fiduciary, I am more of an educator first before an advisor, trying to always educate clients on what the, they do and wore a lot of hats in my industry. And when I got back in this industry in 2004, 2005, I told my wife, there's two things I wanna focus on. One, I'm never gonna charge a client a fee. And two, I'm never gonna have a client lose money in their portfolio. And I've stuck to my guns and it's happened every year since that time frame. And I'm going to keep that perfect record for you. 99% of all my clients personally have two advisors. They have the advisors for the risk side, the gun taking side with the stock market. And they have you know, my, my side of who I work with are strictly for um, the protection and guarantee side for your um, portfolio, full wide range of what we want to do. And I got into this industry mainly because I was sick of seeing people taken advantage of in a lot of different areas and way in life, losing money at the casinos when I was a dealer way back when in Vegas and Reno and Lake Tahoe, seeing people just being careless and not educating themselves. And when people make mistakes, it costs them. And I always, I've said this, I'll say this later in the presentation, there's only two days of the year that you cannot change and that's yesterday and tomorrow. And what we focus here at Clear Income Strategies Group is not worrying about yesterday to take care of tomorrow. Enjoy the present of today, because if you do things right today, tomorrow will take care of itself. Also, I wrote a book, Across the Bridge Retirement, was published a couple of years ago. If you'd like to have a copy of that, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to get you a hard copy or a PDF as well. Like I said, I've been an educator and all these uh, articles I was written and associated with are on our website, if you'd like to go into and see any of them. Like I said, education first and, um, advising second, please let us know. We can share all those with you. We have an associate here, Jeff Conyers, um, works in the office here. He has forgotten more about Medicare and life insurance than I'll ever know. We've been together for over five, six years. He's a plethora of knowledge. Anything you wanna know about life insurance, long-term care insurance, and especially Medicare, with Medicare open enrollment coming in. Jeff is like me, he doesn't charge any fees. We get compensated by the companies we work for. Let us know when we get in touch with Jeff on the way. So this two-part seminar, we're gonna start with Social Security, which is one of the most sought after um, topics out there. And a lot of people don't realize that Social Security is one of the biggest assets that most people have in this world. And they don't realize if they don't take care of it properly, how much they can lose it for. And people say, well, how's that possible, Dolph? I say, well, let's just say you're getting $1,500 a month from your Social Security check when you start taking Social Security. That's $18,000 a year, assuming no increases. Let's say you live 25 years. How much money have you taken out? You've only taken out $700,000. So I'm doing quick numbers in my head. Let's see, um, 15, 150, let's just say half a million dollars you've taken out of that social security. Is your 401k your house worth a half a million dollars? That's just 20 years. If you're taking it out 30 years, you're at three quarters of a million and so forth. And that doesn't include cost of living adjustments. Social security was created folks to supplement your lifestyle, not to keep in your lifestyle. The objectives I'm gonna cover in this segment is all the complexity of social security and why it's crucial to make the right claiming decisions, the role social security should play in your overall retirement income and monetary consequences on claiming early versus delaying. It's very important, um, the decisions you make of when you're gonna take your social security. A Little bit on key spousal decisions and benefits and then how Social Security is structured to combat inflation and add to your tax liabilities in retirement, which is a big thing because no one, including myself, likes to pay extra in taxes. 
We also have a, um, a social security white paper that we're gonna send to you just today for uh, showing it to you, uh, attending, excuse me, plethora of knowledge right from A to B and everything you need to know about social security. If you look at the timeline of social security, it was, uh, it was created back with the Roosevelt area in uh, 1935. And you can see all the different little changes it's been adding over the years. Payroll's been raised, Medicare was added, cost of living adjustments, and the yada, yada, yadas. And the reports are that somehow after 30, 2035, Social Security is going to be Kaputsky. It's going to be broke. No money's going to be in there. Personally, I don't think Social Security is going to go anywhere. I think there are a lot of changes. I mean, you've seen with the Secure Acts of 2017, 19, and 21, how they've been changing a lot of things uh, coming forward. They have a lot of different um, things they're going to be doing. We'll talk about that in just a second. Believe it or not, there's a couple can claim over up to 9 different thousand different claiming possibilities, combinations with their Social Security. Social Security Administration cannot coordinate with outside efforts. It has to stay within Social Security. The rules and laws continue to change year after year. I mean, and how do you keep up with all these law changes unless you're, you're, someone's telling you? You got to join like our social media. We, we post all the changes every time they happen pretty much within a day or two. And that's just a way of keeping yourself updated without having to look out there for them. And believe it or not, Social Security Administration is prohibited from giving advice to consumers and professionals. So you got to create your own uh, research. You got to create your own ways of how you're going to take Social Security. Key changes have been happening is there's only a few years left to remain for restricted application, hence the old file and suspend. Those born before January 2nd of 54 can collect 50% of their spousal or ex-spousal benefits while allowing the benefits to grow through 2023, which is only a little over 100 days away. Uh, COLA finally experienced a significant increase as well as Medicare at the same time, take one to go to the other. In January 2022, Social Security beneficiaries will receive a 5.9% cost of a living adjustment. Very big and important, but how long is this going to last and why? what are the reasons behind it? One only knows. I mean, because the key change is also is Social Security is, is limiting, is, earnings are limited right now because not enough people are putting into Social Security like the boomers of the world that really are the heart and soul. Beneficiaries continue to work or are able to earn $600 more in 2022. Part of the benefit that is temporary withheld. When is it not going to be withheld anymore? Again, only the current administration or them forward can tell us. They're talking about increasing full retirement age. Right now it's at 72. They just changed that recently. Now there's rumblings in the fire that it's going to go to 74, maybe even 75 which will change a lot in there. And this is another reason trying to keep social security around. And for those born in 1960 or later, well, your full retirement age is now increased to the age of 67. So that's when your full retirement age hits you when social security used to be 65 and 66 and 66 in several months, da, 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 da. and now it's up to 67. Hence another way of them trying to keep money in social security. And a lot of people always say, one of the most common questions I get with people are, Dolph, should I claim earlier, I should delay. Well, the two questions you got to ask yourself is one, do you need the money now? And that is the number one question. Don't just take it because it's there. Take it because if you need it now to supplement your lifestyle, to keep up with inflation, which I think is what Social Security is designed to, is to keep up with inflation and supplement your lifestyle. Don't hold on to it thinking about the increase is going to be out there because at a very base minimal, yeah, you can start Social Security at 750 a year or a month, excuse me versus a thousand four years later and then 1300 eight years later it's about a, a 10 to 14 year break even point depending on cola for social security benefits so ask yourself what's more important enjoying this money from like 62 to 76 or from like 76 to 90 which one is going to be more important to you that should be also a big uh implement for which when you're going to claim your social security benefits I am more of, hey, if you're retiring at 64, claim your benefits at 64 and use that as a supplemental income and enjoy that next 14 years before it gets break even. You can even bank that money and earn some interest on it and help yourself um, going forward on Social Security. Last thing I'm going to cover is very important about that is I always say, it's, <coughs> excuse me, how much money you have, it's how much income you have coming in from Social Security based on your original um, funds coming in. I mean, this is going to change too. I almost promise you, I hate using the word promise, but I almost can guarantee you this as well. The taxation on Social Security is up to 85% now 
for a single person making more than $34,000 a year. That's huge. And if you're married, it's only $10,000 more. They're going to tax 85% of your social security. The tax software that we have here, we can run for you. We can show you how to keep you under that 85%, still enjoy the lifestyle you want, but paying less in taxes. And if you're taking out more money and more money, more money, and you have that um, provisional incomes going over what it needs to be, if you're getting $30,000 in social security, you'd be paying taxes on 15,000 all the way to uh, $27,000 a day. You don't want to do that. That's where getting with a CPA or running the tax software can only help you down there. Potential changes to social security over the next 10 years. Um, they're going to increase the salary cap for the payroll. They're going to reduce benefits for high earners. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they're going to re potentially raise the retirement age. One that nobody likes, especially uh, business owners like myself, is they're going to increase the payroll tax, which has already happened twice over the last three years. Raise the minimum benefit of social security. And again, the big cost that we want is reduce COLA increases. If you don't know what COLA stands for, it's cost of living adjustments. It's supposed to be there to help you, not go against you. Well, that's all the information we have on social security today. Again, we have the white paper we're gonna share for you and any other information you'd like to know, please let me know. So now section I wanna get into and people like scratch their head, is like why an annuity might not be right for you is like I said, I've been doing this for the last 18 plus years and annuities is a big part of my portfolio, especially because of the guarantees. The guarantees for income, principal protection, all that stuff, market, staying away from the market volatility. But there's a lot of reasons why you get yourself into the wrong annuity it's only going to hurt you. And I have had multiple clients over the years come back to me and say, Dolph, why did I get this from person A over here? And there's a big difference because captive agents and independent agents are very important to realize when you're working with somebody. Are they giving you one option, two options, or are they going with multiple options? Are they doing what's best for you or are they doing what's best for themselves or that's all that they offer? I've worked with individuals before where they work with two companies. I mean, I, when I first started out in this industry from 2004 to 2010, I was a captive agent myself. And the company I worked with, we had two annuities we could offer to people. Two, that was, that was what the bosses came up with. And a lot of times I had clients came in and I didn't feel morally correct by offering it to them. And I said, you know, this is not the right one for you. Maybe you should find something else to work with. And when I broke out in 2010 and became a, my, own, my own shop, we expanded the portfolio to offering multiple different ones out there because it's not a one size fits all. Consider yourself looking at like you're looking for an airline ticket. Now, unless you're like loyal, 100% loyal to American Airlines, just we're using them because they're the hub here in Charlotte, they're going to give you their rates, their shopping times. But if you go to Expedia, an independent out there, they're going to give you all the different airlines, all the different costs, all the different flight options have more options out there to find exactly what time and flight you need to get you from point A to point B, whether it's nonstop, or the, whether it's one stop, and cost. It can save you on cost. So having more independent options is a lot better than being stuck in one area because would you ever rather have that option of somebody that works with just two companies or 36 plus different companies to have more variety out there to find what you're looking for? Now, five reasons people get annuities out there, and this is the five that well, my client base and others have presented, is number one of the ones in no particular order, but it's principal protection. They want to secure their, their principal. They don't want to lose any money. This year, I mean, S&P is down 17, the Dow's down 16, the Nasdaq's down 26 as of yesterday. I mean, uh, it's just, they don't want to, they're sick of going backwards. They want to put in their money and know it's going to be there. They don't want to have any downside risk where they want the market goes down, your funds stay the same. Market goes up, you're going to get some of those gains. They want to plan their future versus guessing their future. And with annuities, you can plan your future with the correct one versus guessing what they're going to be one. Guaranteed lifetime income, preventing you from outliving your assets. I mean, people are living longer. I actually have a client that's 104 right now. She's doing great, still driving, still drinking a glass of scotch every night. It's wonderful when I talk to her. But it's amazing that you have an income that you can never outlive but in between that and social security, which they're like one and the same, you know, you're always going to have that paycheck coming in. And of course, diversification, like I said before, 99% of my clients have a second advisor for that diversification of, Hey, I want to go for the gusto. I want to get as much as I possibly can. I can accept some loss, but I'm okay with that, which leads us into five reasons people don't get annuities. And 
One of them is they don't mind the risk. They, they want as much upside potential. And if they lose money, they'll have the philosophy or they have the time, they're younger, for that, that money to potentially come back to them. Another big reason people don't get them is there's advisors out there who persuade you this is not the right thing for you. A lot of these advisors are fee-based advisors and they don't offer, uh, they might offer variable annuities, which I wouldn't offer to an Ohio State fan, being a Michigan fan myself, but they're going to say, hey, we can do better over time. We can perform, we can do this better. The S&P and stuff will outperform it. And I'll show you here in a few minutes how the S&P is not going to outperform an annuity over a long stretch of all whatsoever guaranteed. Then the other one is people, they don't receive options. They work with a captive agent. Here's your two options, Mr. Client. Uh, well, I'm looking for this. Well, this will provide most of that for you. Might not get all of it, but they didn't get the right options for it. So it's like, no, they're, of course, the biggie one out there is like, they've heard nothing but negative things about annuities. And most of those are variable annuities, but they will not, these people, the advocates who talk bad about annuities there, but the other people that talk bad about annuities, they were put in the wrong annuity. They were put into something that didn't do what they wanted it to do. And of course, the last one is people fear change. And I use, I use the one fear change is procrastination. They sit back on the sidelines, just waiting and waiting and waiting for no unknown reason. And next thing it's either it's too late or, oh, now, damn, the market's down 30%. Now I have to wait for my money to come back. And they have an excuse for everything. And th those are the ones that are the hardest. And those are the ones that will never, not say never, but those are the ones that have the most difficulty going forward because they'll never realize and say, hey, let's, let's make a change. My dad gave me this quote, and I love this quote. It's, it's not the annuity itself. It's the choice of annuities you have. And what I mean by that is, again, the captive versus non-captive is every annuity is designed to do something different. It's like option A over here is going to offer you a participation rate of 40%. Option B is going to be offering you a participation of 70%. Now, what the participation rate means is how much of the gains of that index you're going to receive. And I'm going to show you right now, I'm looking at a sequence of returns portfolio of actual numbers of this is another reason that people don't get annuities because captive agent A is going for the high commission and he's going to offer you this one product with a participation rate of only 40%, where if you had options and you can realize that you have higher participation rates, you're going to make more money for that down the road. And this is why I say why annuity might be bad for you. If you look at this chart on the screen, you can see over here, start with 250,000. These are the actual returns of the S&P 500 from 2000 to 2019. All the downs, all the ups, and boom. So the 20 year average is 6.86%. The par rate participation rate I just mentioned to you on this particular annuity over here is 40%. Meaning you get 40% of the upside, but none of the downside risk. So your 20 year average is boom, 4.55%. A uh, little bit lower than the S&P. Mind you, there's no fees being taken out of either one of these. Now I said, if you're getting options from an independent advisor and someone like that, and so mind you, we have participation rates over 100%, but I'm just going to give you 70% for the participation rate. And look at the difference. Just by having that participation rate, by getting a different option for you from, from company A to company B, now you're having at 70% that last 20 years, you didn't touch the S&P, you got 1.1 million versus under 700,000. A lot of people say, well, Dolph, that's only because the first couple of years of the s p were horrible. Well, I'm going to randomize these numbers and I'm, I'm going to click it. And if you notice on the screen, everything is changing except for two things. The 690 and the 1.1 are staying the same. No matter what order we take the last 20 years of the s p and there were some great years and there were some bad years in here, the annuity outperformed 100% of the time what the s p did, like I mentioned. And this is only at 70%. So you're taking away 30% of the upside from your portfolio to protect the downside because you can see these zeros here. And at the end of 20 years, mind you, with no fees being taken out, 1.1 here, 690 here. It's a no brainer question because if you take 1% out of here, it's even worse. Which side would you want to be? And mind you, you're only getting 90% here. Now let's reset it. And let's just say you want to start taking income out 5% of your portfolio even though Morningstar says three and a half or 3%, the S&P, if you would have done the same scenario, you're out of money after 19 years, where with the annuity earning only 70%, you still have, have $155,000 more than you put into the account. 
this is where I said why an annuity might not be right for you because you might not be getting the right annuity. Again, it's not the annuity itself, it's the choices that you're given. And if you're given the right choice, things like this can only benefit you. And that's why showing you like an independent like myself, different options out there can do it for you. That's just one of the reasons why having options are great. I mean, you hate annuities? Again, I ask people in the webinars and the seminars and the lunch and learns and stuff, well, which annuities do you have? Which one annuities do you hate? And why do you hate it? And it's amazing the responses I get were, uh, well, I heard that somebody got this annuity and it didn't do for them. Boom, they are off of the wrong one. Or they have too many fees. I've lost money in them. Boom, heck, variable annuity. I mean, here's the two big annuity guys out there that hate annuities more than anybody, Ken Fisher and Dave Ramsey. And some people on Ramsey, it's they're like stuck to him. Like everything he says is correct. I mean, there's a few things that Dave Ramsey says I agree with. But like as a fiduciary, diversification and guarantees you can't take away from. Social Security is an annuity. So if you say you hate annuities, you're basically saying I hate Social Security at the same time. But Mr. Fisher, if you look at his past, he was a big owner and self-proprietor of annuities for several years. And if you look at Mr. Ramsey, he had to adjust this statement here to add the word for most people, it doesn't make sense. That most is boom, out there. Again, it's not a one size fits all. There's four, type, there's four types of annuities out there. There's all these different fancy names, hybrids and this, that and the other, those don't exist. There's a fixed annuity, a fixed index annuity, a median annuity. And the one that has the most complaints in the FINRA history is the variable annuity. One again, I don't offer them, I choose not to. I work with protection, I work with guarantees. I don't work with the unknown. Variable annuity, we will not talk or bash it anymore, except we don't work with the variable annuity. Again, this, the one size fits all, boom, it's become a cliche, is they're designed for four things. And there's four things when it comes to your portfolio, it's liquidity, growth, income, and legacy. That's how it all is. Every annuity out there has a little bit of all of these in there. But like everything else, like if you go to a jewel store, or a, um, uh, a Lowe's or a Home Depot and you're looking for a tool out there, every tool has a purpose. You got to find out what that purpose is. You're not just going to grab one and assume it's going to work and then have to start all over again. If you're looking for liquidity with, and you want to keep principal protection and involved, get a short-term fixed annuity. One, two, three years is boom. Right now, our, our, our one year is 3.1%. Our four years is 4.1% for three years, excuse me. It keeps it liquid, boom, you have that money available to you. If you're looking for growth, you have five years to 10 years in an indexed annuity. Get the, get the upside, like I said, the 70%, the 80%, even more upside potential with no downside risk. Then if you look at the income annuities out there, you have immediate annuities. Immediate annuities, I'm not a huge advocate for, for the right person who doesn't have beneficiaries and they don't care about their money going somewhere else when they pass away. Yeah, it could be good for you, supplement your income. But an income annuity can still have growth and the guaranteed lifetime that can never outlive. And of course, the legacy annuity is just life insurance and fixed index annuities. They have in, where it avoids probate, goes directly to them. The one or two at the bottom of the screen is designed to say, hey, you, every company has specializes in one. I, I can't name the companies on the air because then my disclosure list will be a mile long. But every company has one or two that they design. Every annuity has one or two of these that they really focus on, like, like liquidity, like 20% liquidity versus 10% liquidity and as much growth as possible, or income and growth, or legacy and growth, mixing and matching. But most of them all specialize in one aspect. And when you're looking for a portfolio builder, and we're looking for like that when we're planning, you want to go at least two different options out there. And again, diversification for yourself. Because I've seen mistakes that people might not out there for is, and they, they regret it now, is they put too much money in the annuity and they didn't keep enough money liquid. Well, shame on them, on the advisor, not them, on the advisor, because you have to have today, tomorrow, and never. You have to take, have your money to take care of yourself today, has to work for you for tomorrow. And then you have to have that never money. That money you never plan on touching, but it's nice to know it's there. Some of these people put this money in the annuity and realize, again, you're not locking it up for three to 10 years. You're protecting it for three to 10 years. And this is where I'm overcoming this part of it, where someone gives me $100,000 and they say, hey, Dolph, and what if I need to walk away in five years? What's going to happen? I can tell them exactly what it's going to cost them in a surrender charge down to the penny. Or if you put $100,000 in the stock market and you say, hey, Mr. Broker, I'm going to walk away in five years. What am I going to have? The hands will go up in the air and says, I have no idea. An annuity can tell you what you're doing there. Picking the wrong type of payout. 
A lot of people pick increasing. A lot of people pick index inflation. A lot of people pick level. Some people pick joint. Picking it, don't always chase the higher amount. Chase the better amount. Not comparing payouts. And I said, this is a big one. I said, there's, I'm working with this uh, client right now. It's like I'm offering them guaranteed on their $500,000 of $42,000 guaranteed lifetime income in two years where this other company is going to start her out $14,000 less at $28,000 a year. But they're saying, quote unquote, oh, it could go way over that over the next 20 years if the indexes perform. And I'll ask you a question. Do you think the next 12 years are going to be as good as the last 12 years going forward? Who knows? But I don't think they're, we just went through one of the best stretches ever. Of course, picking the wrong type of guarantees is a big one. Switching to another annuity and giving up the variable guarantees is every annuity has a certain guarantee and don't just jump on it because someone says so. Make sure you research what that guarantee is. And of course, withdrawing too much money. A lot of people just take out more money than they need to. And then they realize down the road, they're like, oh shoot, I don't have enough money. A mistake. Get the annuity for what it's designed for. If you get it for what it's designed for, you can't go wrong. Now I'm going to go into this little section about guarantees versus promises. On the on my left, your right, or I don't know how the computer shows up over there. Um, the horizontal one. These are guarantees. These are our worst case scenario. The one, the longer looking one, is one of the top selling annuities for the last several years. Number one on all the billboards and stuff like that. Every annuity agent, every uh, financial advisor can offer it. The one on the left, select advisors can offer it. But this is where I talk about guarantees, which I would rather work with a guarantee than a promise. Here, this person, a 60 year old, puts in $200,000. They know guaranteed in four years from now, no matter what happens from now, they're going to get a little over $15,000 for life guaranteed. Person on the right, well, they're at $9,600. So if you're trying to budget your portfolio and you're saying you need X amount of debt, like $1,200 a month, Here's your guarantee. There it is, fifteen thousand. It, it can always get better. It can never get any worse. We're over here, ninety six hundred. Big difference. Now you're not even getting a thousand dollars a month. You're playing catch up from your portfolio write up. Now the same portfolio here. Reality versus fiction. On the left, you're looking at the worst twelve year stretch, and mind you, their participation rate's one hundred thirty percent versus the participation rate of forty percent on the other side. So. The one on the right is showing you the best 12 years they've ever had repeated. The left is showing you the, um, the worst 12 years they've ever had repeated. And you can see the difference. It's like on the right, they're saying, oh, look at the increasing income. Now you're up to 15,000. And let's say that the, uh, the advisor you're working with, they show you this illustration. And they're saying, oh yeah, this is gonna give you 15,000 to start. And by the time you're 75 years old, you're gonna be getting $40,000 a year. You're not going to have any money left in your account, but you're getting $40,000 a year. This other one over here is going to be paying you $17,000. You still got $400,000 left in case of an emergency. The one on the right, I offer it. It's, it's for the right situation, but for someone who doesn't have a beneficiary, they don't care about paying taxes because, again, just that $39,000, that puts you running over the, the threshold where not 85% of your Social Security is automatically taxed. Do you need that much increasing income for it? Hmm. Most people say no. That one's designed strictly for, I don't care what my principal does. I have no money to leave to my beneficiary. I just want as much money as I can get for the rest of my life. That's what that one's designed for. The one on the left is designed for that person who wants to budget their money, who wants to have reality and say, hey, I'm going to get this going forward. This is what I'm planning on. But the most important thing is when I'm 75 to 80 years old, and something happens and I need to go to a, a facility, I need to buy a car, I need to help my, my grandsons out with college, whatever, they still have a chunk of cash over there available to them that they can take out the full amount of value if they want to and do whatever they want to do with. The one on the right doesn't give that option to you. <clears throat> and if you look at the most recent returns on these things, where up here I like to focus on the lowest, the worst this thing has done is 6.14% average growth Plus, if you look, I told you the 130% participation rate, where the lowest on here is the average low is 3.73%. It's almost 3% difference growth. This is one of those situations when I mentioned between the four types. Are you looking for income or are you looking for growth? The one on the top gives you income and growth. The one on the bottom is just giving you income, doesn't give you any growth potential in all reality. Now, Barron's, big company out there, 
They've teamed up with a company called IMS, the Independent Annuity Market Research Company. And they have this big report comes out that people will say, oh my God, here we go. And here's, they're offering the, te- the top three guaranteed income annuities and the top three accumulation annuities. I just mentioned to you that one, the last couple of slides over there, that's been the number one selling fixed indexed annuity out there. Um, don't know why, but it is for it, but it doesn't even show up in the top three here. Not even close on there because this company is showing what they're wanting you to see. Hence, captive agents are showing you with the captive agents. My favorite part over here is the accumulation one on the right, seeing Delaware National American showing you through three different products. That as an independent, I ran those three products for what their scenarios were versus my 36 companies and all the different ones. I had my associates in Atlanta and in Arizona ran the numbers. And these are the top um, four I came up with that outperform those three by a considerable amount. And when I talk about outperform, I look at the worst. I look at the least, the least scenario, the one on the top, the worst it's ever done in a 10 year stretch was 5.83. The one in the middle, it's a home run hitter. The worst it's ever done is 11.34. The bottom left is 6.35. And the bottom right is a little north of uh, 8%. That's the worst it's ever performed, is that eight or six? Uh, looks like 8.57% or 6.98%. That's the worst they've ever done. Those three on the previous page, they were right around the worst they've ever done were three and a half, four and a half percent. Big difference. Looking at, I like to focus on the worst case scenario. Again, why an annuity might be right, be right for you is you're not getting the right choices. You're not getting the right annuity out there. Again, it's not a one size fits all portfolio. Excuse me. Now, if you look at these individuals, Ben Bernanke, Tony Robbins, Susie Orman, these are the opposites of the Dave Ramseys and the Ken Fishers out there. I mean, like Susie said, she says it all the time. You don't want to take risk, but still want to play the stock market. An index annuity could be right for you. Tony Robbins, keep the market safe. Fixed annuities can be a great alternative to safer money investments. And Ben Bernanke, the chair of the Federal Reserve, his two biggest assets were annuities. They were fixed in annuities. I mean, and he's the chair of the Federal Reserve. Look at some of these big boys out there. They all want to, they've made a lot of money out there. And the only place you can protect it in that respect is an annuity. Now, going forward, we have a lot of things out there. I mean, we have an uncertain economy right now. Inflation is high. We have wars in Russia and Ukraine and Afghanistan and unknowns going all over the place. We have instability with China. We have trade issues. We have job issues. We have this, that, and the other. I mean, the list can go on and on, which is going to show you what's going to happen over the next several years. And this is your money. You've worked hard for it. Jerome Powell, anticipating ongoing rate increases are appropriate. Dunley, they, they want a weaker stock market. They want higher bond yields. The stock market, I think, is going to finally catch on to that, which would go kaputsky. Elon Musk, well, still, he's going to cut 10% off his salary staff because he realizes what's coming forward. And JP Morgan is bracing themselves to be very conservative without the balance sheet. I mean, a lot of signs you got to pay attention to of what's going to happen in the market. I mean, I remember 20 years ago when the market went down 100 points, it was front page news. Now they don't even talk about it until it gets to five to 600 points out there. Again, what's important to you, liquidity for today, growth for tomorrow, income for life, or legacy of loved ones. That's when you're looking to diversify your portfolio and you're looking to maybe an annuity is right for you. Make sure you decide what order you want those for, for your diversification portfolio that goes into effect and you look at the right options for you. You don't want the wrong tool for the job. I mean, the honey to-do list is never going to go away. Home Depot is always going to be there to stay. I'm not going to make a rhyme out of this stuff, but I'm not the most, most Mr. Fix-It when it comes around the house. But I've learned if I need something, I'm going to take a picture of it and take it to Home Depot and say, this is what I need. And if they if you do that, you might get the right tool. If you find the right person to get it for the job. But, but just go in there and try to explain, hey, I want to do this, I'm going to do that. And you need a certain hammer or a screwdriver to do, take care of this job. And you go there and get the wrong one. They got millions of tools in Home Depot. The wrong, they're all designed for a certain thing. I mean, obviously, a lot of them are multi-use. But if you don't get the right tool for the right reasons, like you're not going to need a saw to pound in a pitcher. Or you're not going to need a hammer to paint a wall. I mean, you want to get the right tool. I mean, that's what an annuity is for, is using it for the right reasons. But a lot of people just say, Dolph, I just don't like insurance companies. I'm sick of insurance companies. I pay into them, pay out of them. 
And I'm going to ask you this last question. Do you have homeowner's insurance? Do you have car insurance? Do you have personal property insurance? Do you have health insurance? Do you have life insurance? Most of the people I work with have all five of these. Most of them have three. Some even have four. But what do you do? You're paying into there to protect against the unknown. The same thing as an annuity. You're protecting against the unknown. But an insurance company, if you get in an accident, someone gets sick, lightning strikes or something of that nature, the insurance company is one of the first people you call to make sure you get reimbursed, to get taken care of so nothing falls back in your life. So if you're going to insure your home, your car, your life, your personal property, and your family, why not put a little bit of money into the right annuity for the right reasons at the same time? Again, I appreciate you taking the time for us. You can contact us. Let us know with any questions you have. The information from signing up, we're going to send you, email you, or mail you the packet with the white papers and all the stuff that goes along with this presentation. So be on the lookout for that. Um, go to guardyoursavings.com to see all the different resources that we do offer for you because we are full disclosure for you. And if you have any questions, please uh, go to info at cisforlife.com. If you'd like to schedule some time, I have a calendar link, or you can give us a call and talk to Laura or myself and schedule a 15 or 30 minute consultation. Say, hey, Dolph, what did you mean by that? Or, hey, here's my situation. What can we go forward with it? And then all the disclosures of all the information for you, I have to pass along for you real here and share the information for you because I am not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a tax consultant, but I do have access to a lot of those stuff with and around me. And we want to make sure that everybody watching doesn't say, hey, he, he cited something that he can't cite and stuff. So there we go. Once again, God bless you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I truly look forward to helping you in the future. Remember, it's not a one size fits all. It's what fits your, you the best. Take care and God bless.